Hey everyone, so welcome after another short break. This time I'm going to talk about a postcard. So I get a postcard from a friend and well, the postcard is encrypted. It's a really nice looking postcard, by the way. So yeah, I guess the story behind this is that sometimes I send postcards to my friends which are also encrypted and my friends started getting back at me. So. Um, if you did watch some of my live streams, you might already seen me trying to decode one or two postcards. I did fail at some of them and I did pretty well on some other ones. So this time, this postcard is basically from a friend who already sent me one before and well, um, I decoded it pretty quickly. So the friend decided that I need a bigger challenge and um, this is it. So. How do I start with it? First of all, if you notice the code on the screen or actually uh, the postcard here, you can see that there are three numbers at the top. And um, the three numbers are like around 13,000, around uh, 200, 1,000 and something which looks like maximum integer or close to it. Now, I obviously transcribed all the other numbers and um, but the fact, the sole fact that the three numbers on the top are separated from the rest is pretty telling. It already tells us that these numbers are probably used as a key for the for decoding the postcard. So yeah, uh, we know that. We know also that the numbers are, well, all of them are rather small. They are under 32 bits, which, well, tells us something. It doesn't tell us a lot yet. They're both even and odd numbers, so this isn't really telling either. Now, the way I started is I figured that you probably need to do a mathematical operation between the four numbers, that is between the number from the list and um, taking each number separately. And you take that number, let's call it n, and you do some math operation with the first number, then with the second number, and in the end with the third number. Which mathematical operations? I had no idea. So, well, in such cases, you just brute force it. So I created a table of possible mathematical operations. I didn't think, really think it will be bitwise operations like these two, but I included them anyway, because why not? I mean, this is a brute force. I just need to later look, look for the results, so that's fine. But there is addition, there is subtraction, there is uh, division, there is modulo operand, uh, operator or operand, which might be um, that might be used here. I actually really expected this to be used at one place or the other. There is also multiplication and identity, as in just return the first number or return the second number, ignoring the, the rest. So after that, I just made three loops. Yeah, I know you can do it better in Python, but um, at this point, that doesn't really matter, right? This isn't production code. This is an ad hoc code, which is supposed to solve the riddle for me. And um, I've run each of the operations. Um, so these three, O, P, and R are the operations, and I run them like this. Then basically dumped them in several ways. You can see some print prints well commented out and some still not being commented out and printed them. So what's currently being enabled for printing is basically you take a, the result of the operation, you just get the lowest byte of it. The operation might be, you know, multiple bytes in, in size. Python thankfully has big integers by, by default, so that's fine. I just take the lowest byte, I convert it into an ASCII character and then I concatenate it with a string and I output that string because I figured that, hey, if I actually hit the correct operation, then it's going to be printable and all the other operations which are not correct are not going to be printable. I could actually add some additional code here which would, you know, check if a given op given result is fully printable or not, but uh, I did it by hand, didn't bother to do it. So there are quite a lot of results and um, in the end, while looking through them, I stumbled upon this one. And this is the sole result which is actually ASCII printable. So that's 605, which are the number of the functions and this is the result. Again, I was only taking the lowest byte of the, um, yeah, of the, of the result, but the result was multiple bytes. So probably other bytes would be other letters, right? But that wasn't the case, and I actually, um, I got to this result in around 5 minutes, maybe 10 minutes, you know, just coding time basically. 
And then I was stuck for around 20 minutes trying to figure out where are the other letters, because these letters are fine, right? But where are the other ones? Um, are there on higher bytes or something? And in the end, I had to basically take a step back from it and look at the operations which I have, which what is the 605? And if we get back here, right? The 605 would be multiplication, then addition, and then modulo operand. And looking at this, I was like, that's LCG. So what's LCG? Well, basically, um, let me open the browser. Uh, I have it somewhere here. Here we go. This is the linear congruential generator, which is one of the most common pseudo random number generators. And uh, this is the formula for it. You basically start with this, you have some numbers, which is A, C, and N, and hey, hello, this is actually, you know, the top numbers here on the postcard. And then you take a number, and this is the number from the list from the bottom of the postcard, uh, which is the seed in terms of pseudo-random number generators, so uh, this, these numbers here are actually the seeds, and then you generate the next, um, the next element of uh, mm, of a pseudo-random number str uh, stream. So, yeah, knowing this, what I did is I actually ran this formula a couple of times. As in, um, I ran it once, then, uh, then the second time using the result as, uh, again, as the seed and so on, which is the normal way you use it, by the way. And I arrived at this code, which, uh, which basically does what I described. And it turns out that if you always grab the first character, uh, sorry, the first byte, the low lowest byte of the next number, you actually get three more characters out of um, out of this random number stream. After running this code, and mm, which I guess we can do. Okay, so yeah, um, now I have my console ready, so we can see what actually happens when we run the code. We get the results. Uh, these are basically this is the fir first element of the string. This is the second one, and uh, no, sorry, I think one of these is the second one, and then this is the third one. I don't remember what's actually being displayed. Uh, but we get the decoded message. Some of you might say, hey, this is still encrypted. No, that's actually Polish. Um, yeah, I know it looks, it looks really similar, but um, it says, um, um, I'm trying to like translate it to English, uh, best greetings from New York, from Krzaku, which, as you know, is one of my moderators on my live streams. So this is it, it took me around I don't remember exactly, but 34, 37 minutes, something like that, which is quite decent. I'm quite happy that I stumbled on the initial idea how to begin solving it quite fast. And I'm quite unhappy that I actually struggled figuring out what to do with it and how to get the next bytes. I didn't figure it out until I understood that this is actually LCG, right? After I knew that, then it was uh, quite trivial to finish it. So that's it for today, and thank you, and have a great time, and see you next time.